Hi everyone, welcome back to another Community Roundup video where we take a look at interesting things happening in and around the Blender community. I'm sorry it's been a little while since we did one of these. It takes a while gathering and researching the different channels and resources I think are kind of interesting or useful. In this video we've got quite a few free resources you can download, as well as some channels I haven't mentioned and some cool art projects, so grab a drink and let's jump into it. Before we get into community content, I just want to make you aware that on the Blender Studio they started uploading these really cool documentary style production logs, which are kind of giving you a behind the scenes look into the production process for the new project called Pet Projects. It's really interesting and quite comedic. It kind of includes conversations from different members of the Blender Studio so you can see how they kind of solve problems and decide what directions to take with the animated projects. I think at the time of making this there are a couple available. So they've got production log number one and two in between all the other useful content on the studio as well. Really nice that they're making these. I think having these kind of personalized videos helps people connect with the development process and doesn't really make the Blender Studio feel like this kind of separate closed off thing. But I think one thing that it highlights more than anything is that there is chaos in the production process. You know, you can start working on something, but then if a change is made earlier in the process, then you have to make all of that again. And then another change is made and have to make all of it again. So I think if you're ever struggling with getting your own projects finished, then maybe it will be quite therapeutic kind of hearing it from a team that has experience about how progress is not always a linear path. OK, so for a community channel, there's this interesting YouTube channel called Covingsworth, and they've only got a couple of videos, but they're pretty good videos. And you can see that they've got quite a lot of attention as well over a quarter of a million views for the first one here, 50,000 for the second one. They're basically environmental scene breakdowns in Blender, but the tips they include are actually quite good. And there's a lot of information condensed into these. Production quality is again quite high and you can see here the results are good. For this one in particular, there are a lot of material tips. So let's just take a quick look at the scene quickly. You can see we've got this asphalty road that's been degraded. They had some really nice tips for layering different textures with that. We have cars there on the right from Sketchfab and they give you some nice tips about painting graffiti over them. The building at the back there kind of makes use of an Ian Hubertian style of using an image play and kind of building out from that but again you know kind of degrading it with this texture painting from stencils and then for the grass around using geometry nodes with a noise texture to give this kind of um, quick sense of clumping so there's quite a lot of information in here I think even if you already know about all these techniques you might still find this quite inspiring because you go oh wait you could actually use it for that like I never really considered using graffiti in this way like using stencils in Blender to paint them on it is of course a narrated video as well so it should be quite an enjoyable watch here's the bit about um, painting graffiti onto a car I really like this because I just hadn't really considered that before and the results are amazing. Okay, for another channel, we have Tiny Noki. This is someone that's been on my list of channels to share for a little while. They actually have a really large Instagram following. A lot of their artwork has this very kind of cutesy style to it, which I know a lot of people love. On their YouTube channel in particular, what you're going to find here in terms of value are more artistic breakdowns. The more recent videos are narrated as well, so they'll talk you through the process. The earlier ones are more just time lapses. But one thing we're going to see with other channels as well is that Tiny Noki has also provided us with a resource, a really cool one, Tiny Eye 1.1 free procedural eyes for Blender. I recommend taking a look at this because the results are fantastic and yes, it's free. Now, one thing about Tiny Noki's presentation style that I really like is that you can tell they put a lot of attention into branding and visualization and just making sure things look good. You'll notice this if you take a look on their Gumroad page. First of all, everything's really nice. Good thumbnails, which I don't even bother with on Gumroad. But clicking through, we have animated GIFs kind of demonstrating the procedural aspect of the eyes. Come on, Gumroad, load the cover. There we go. And scrolling down, we got the video, we got kind of annotated diagrams here showing how it works. So I think people are really going to love this. Eyes are quite a difficult thing to make procedurally. There are a few resources for doing that, but the results of this one I thought were great. And you can see like how customizable it is. You can do everything from realistic human eyes to something much more evil and creature like. So yeah, it works in Eevee and Cycles, and they wanted to approach it in a way where the properties were minimal and straightforward. Shape keys control the basic shape of the eye, and they have node groups here to control the visual styling. Again, just to show you their Instagram as well, in case you're interested. Here we go, Tiny Noki, 121,000 followers. That's impressive. And a lot of lovely artwork to go along with it, just in case you wanted to spice up your feed. Okay, another channel that's been on the list for a while that I didn't get around to was Sophie Jantag. Now, I hope I'm pronouncing the last name correctly. Again, you know me, I get these things wrong all the time. But I love their content because Sophie does a lot of this sketch artwork and they give a lot of advice for how to do 2D artwork inside of Blender using Grease Pencil. On top of this, they've also provided some resources. Now, this is something I really appreciate because I love how educational YouTubers are also providing resources for people. In particular, one video I really want to highlight is this recent one, getting a traditional pencil style with grease pencil, blender tutorial and drawing demo. What Sophie has done is create a free Gumroad pack, which allows you to get these realistic pencil styles inside of grease pencil. Again, really lovely presented Gumroad page here. So it's freely available, but there is a bonus pack as well for $2. If you enjoy resources like this, I definitely recommend you support the creators. And the results are wonderful. If you watch the video explaining it, Sophie provides you with a breakdown and just looking at 
uh, these pencil strokes in Blender is, is brilliant. I love it. The approach they took as well was something I really love because it reminds me of my recent experiments in semi-procedural materials. Essentially taking sketch samples from real life, cutting out the bits that you think will be useful in terms of like brush content, and then isolating that to use as a sample inside of the software. So Sophie will provide you with advice on how to do this if you want to do it yourself. But of course, like we said, they've also provided this Gumroad package so you can make use of their creativity. Like I said, the results are wonderful and it's really kind of satisfying just watching them come together. Take a look here at how Sophie's using these brushes to kind of fill in this wolf sketch. It's just like such an intuitive 2D technique with grease pencil. Very cool. But of course, there is other content as well. So consider taking a look and subscribing to the channel. I'm sure they will appreciate the support. All right, we're going to check in with Victor Stepanov, otherwise known as CG Python. Now, this is someone that I have recommended in a previous community roundup, but I want to give them a bit more attention again because they've been continuing to provide useful, valuable information for people that want to learn how to use Python inside of Blender. There are so many different examples here, tutorials of how to modify different aspects of Blender using Python, and I really, really think they deserve more views and a larger following because condensing all of this together, there's so much value here and knowledge. Python is something that's a bit difficult to get people interested in, and it's also a bit difficult to kind of market that to the wider audience. But think about it, how many of you use add-ons with Blender? They enrich the experience providing new tools. They can even enable new sub-communities to grow inside of Blender. They can allow new industries to get connected with Blender as well. It's like, it's such an important aspect. And I just want to say that if you are interested in kind of developing your Python skills for Blender, then CG Python is a very valuable resource of a channel that I recommend checking out. All right, let's take a look at this channel, Outgang. So this is a channel I learned about only recently, but I think the content's pretty interesting. They do a lot of character-focused work with a realistic spin. Now there's a combination of Blender and ZBrush content here, as well as other discussions and advice with the creation process when it comes to characters and sculpting. But if you're looking for value in terms of Blender, one video I really recommend is their latest one, Improve Your Blender Sculpting with This Powerful Light and Camera Turntable. Now this taught me something I never really thought about. Like I never really considered improving how my camera works inside of Blender blender for the sculpting process, but when they explain it in this, it makes so much sense. Essentially, and not to spoil things too much, but if you have especially like a multi-monitor setup like I do, you can change your camera rig so that it maintains the same distance, but you can zoom in and out of it so you're not going to be clipping into the character. And also while you're rotating around, you can have it so on your second view, you can see live a different, especially like side-on angle of the sculpt. It's like when you see this, you realize that there's actually quite a lot of room for improvement with camera work in Blender. So I think if you're doing a lot of professional sculpting in the software, then this is actually really useful. And there's also lighting tips in this as well. So good advice for having nice lighting to really accentuate your sculpt details. So yeah, that's Outgang, definitely recommended. Give them a look. So continuing the trend of Curtis Loves Creators that also provide resources, we have Johnny Matthews. Now this is a channel I've only learned about recently, but again, we have good content variety here for Blender. Recently talking quite a lot about geometry nodes and hair nodes, but if you look, they also do some tools, which I think you're going to find handy for like generalized workflows, such as bulk asset tools, which is a free add-on for helping you modify data in the asset browser, basically helping you do things in bulk to speed up your process. If you're managing a ton of assets, if you're tagging things, removing tags, changing descriptions, adding a bunch of things to different catalogs, etc. And I think something like this might actually go hand in hand with my modular workspaces add on. Watch the recent video if you want to learn more about that. But I just thought this was cool. Again, it's free, but that's not the only thing they do. Of course, like I said, there's more information here, general tutorials, other assets, a lot of geometry nodes based stuff, um, which is you know good to learn about now. The geometry node seems to be in a much more stable position design wise. So yeah, Johnny Matthews, cool stuff. So the next thing I want to show is a project. This is from the Blender subreddit posted by MCPE Master Builder. Um, I just found this one visually Visually satisfying animated demo of my real-time caustic shader from yesterday. Let's take a look. Just enjoy the caustics. Mm, so pretty. I love the rainbowy styles, the slight glare, the accumulation of light at the bottom. Mm. <laughs> You're so weird, Curtis. Anyway, so this is actually part of a uh, product. In the description, we can see here, it looks amazing. Are you going to release this? And how much is it going to cost? It's available now, actually. It's currently just some node groups you need to append, but I'm releasing an update very soon where the price will go up, where it's compiled into an installable add-on. Interesting. You can check it out here. Let's take a look. Shaders Plus, Caustics, Thin Film, Dispersion for Cycles and Eevee. Very pretty. I know that this kind of thing is in high demand for shaders, and I know a bunch of creators which have tried to do their own versions of this, but the results in this pack look really, really good. Ooh, check that out. So. Uh, um, yeah, maybe worth keeping an eye on. Oh, hot damn, look at those results. 
All right, so next up we have another free resource here on Gumroad called Better Bloom. Tired of low quality bloom slash glow from Blender's Glare Node? Better Bloom offers exponential bloom for smoother, more natural looking results that can help bring that extra finishing touch to your renders. By the way, I am available. <laughs> I am available to hire for voice work if anyone wants narration for their videos. No one wants that. So yeah, it's a cool node group here. Let's take a look at some of the results. It's a very, as I said, natural bloom. Feels a lot better. It's very easy to plug in lens dirt masks as well. They've actually got a mask input right right there on the node group. So I really want to give this a try, um, especially for the lens dot effect. It looks great. But I think some of you might want to give this a look as well. So for more art project related content, there's a Twitter account I've just started following, but I have seen for a while called Wanako 4D. Again, I might have said that wrong, knowing my peanut pronunciation brain, but they do a lot of really cool stuff, like a lot of sci-fi related things, a lot of emissive content animations. Oh, that was satisfying. Pretty cool VFX. But this one in particular, I really liked. It still gives like this realistic feeling for deep ocean abyss bioluminescent type creatures, but I just feel like the attention to detail on it was great. Let's uh, widen this so you can have a look. There's just like a lot of really cool stuff going on like the material you can tell that it's an actual material we got like some of this kind of noisy surface stuff going on but all that biolumin effect I really like it I just thought this was quite impressive but then again like a lot of the rubber work is impressive as well so if you're interested in kind of more visual creative inspiration I recommend checking out their socials all right, Gleb, what do you have for us today? So as you may know, Gleb's been doing a lot of lighting content recently because they have a new cinematic lighting course out. Um, they've also added a new night lighting section to the course. So if you already purchased it, then you get this extra content, fantastic. And there's a promo video here available if you wanna kind of take a look at some of the added content. I'm probably really gonna love this because I love kind of dark emissive stuff, as you may know, if you've been following for a while. So I think that's gonna be great. And look at Gleb here, Style King. But anyway, even though Gleb already has quite a large following, I just wanted to highlight some of the recent content again because this is also valuable. Cinematic bokeh, bokeh, bouquet, bokeh effect in Blender. 2D fog effect in Blender, quick technique for a realistic look for Eevee. And more recently, master dappled and textured lighting in Blender for easy techniques. One thing I think when I look at this is that if you're the kind of person that struggles with your lighting, with your basic 3D scenes, your dioramas, etc., it's quite easy to feel like everything looks flat, just like this scene here with the Lord of the Rings book. But by combining your light blocking methods, shadow texture, and image projection, the results you can end up with are much more fascinating, kind of feel like they tell more of a story. They just got more of like a, mm, emotional vibe to them. Love it. The power of lighting. So there's always something to learn from Gleb and I'm sure most of you already know about the channel but if you don't then what are you doing? Get on it. But I mean finish this video first please. Okay, resources, resources. CG Boost over on Twitter. Just out of the oven, we have our new and updated Blender 3.5 hotkey PDF. So let's take a look. Now you may know that CG Boost is one of my favorite companies, groups of creators for recommending like paid course content for Blender because I really love the content they make. It feels so well crafted. It's pretty affordable as well. And they're all just really sweet people. But one of the free things you can download is their Blender hotkey sheet. So let's take a look down here. There's a few downloads to choose from. Blender 3.5, let's do the color one. They have a color and a print version it's very considerate and very well made like visually speaking so if you're new to blender if you're coming over from other softwares this might be something useful you can print up to kind of help test yourself or remind yourself what the hotkeys are because blender can be a very hotkey driven software it doesn't have to be but like pretty much everything can be accessed from a few hotkeys and just a little bit of typing so i love that they've made this it's a cool resource something we don't really see people kind of investing much time into anymore but i think it's wonderful and actually along similar lines again if you like kind of book content someone i have recommended before Jan van den Hemel. They have created the Blender Secrets ebook. I did a video about Blender tips a while back, but if you want like the most condensed resource for Blender tips, things you can do in Blender, this has to be like the most valuable package there is. The ebook is freaking huge. 1,930 pages, 621 topics. All future updates are free. Very short step-by-step -step tutorials. Uh, they also have a channel available where you can kind of watch some of the tips as well where they provide breakdowns. It's just like, it's such a gold mine. If you're trying to learn Blender, if you have a resource like this, just like read a couple of them every day. If that, you'll be like a mastermind in no time. Oh my God, I'm just realizing that I'm scrolling down here and I've practically said the same thing. This is how you know I have consistency, people. There is so much content in this, and despite <laughs> despite the size, it's quite easy to find your way around since they've spent time putting together a nice content section at the beginning of the book. You could make it a part of your morning routine. 
I swear I didn't read this before I started recording this again. Consistency, people. Okay, we've got a couple more things to take a look at. So Emiliano Colantoni on YouTube, who is like one of my favorite people for taking a look at alternative modeling styles um, because they just have this mind for it. Like this freeform modeling, hard surface shapes, somewhere in between sculpting and modeling, you can get like just the best, smoothest transitions between shapes. They do the best kind of demonstration content for this. And recently they've been playing with the Blender 3.6 Alpha hard surface modeling with SDF volume nodes, SDF meaning sign distance fields. Now this is relatively advanced stuff, but just like with the meta ball, where you can basically combine these almost voxelized shapes together to get like smooth transitions between shapes which are kind of non-destructive which is so much like easier and more freeing than traditional poly modeling or traditional sub d modeling and um, you can get these really cool shapes i would show you but come on youtube i'm recording a video all right, best I can do is probably show you the thumbnails for now. If you're interested in alternative methods for doing hard surface modeling slash sculpting in Blender, then I recommend taking a look at Emiliano's channel because it's quite valuable. You might also be interested in my other video about um, the other ways to model in Blender. I think that one took a few people by surprise because um, it kind of introduced like a few ideas for non-traditional ways to make meshes. And as we're coming to the end of the video, I just want to share a couple of my things. So my last video was about putting medical scans into Blender using a resource by Ben, BBBN19, now known as Cartesian Caramel. And um, that's a really cool free resource in there as well. I know this video is not particularly applicable to everyone, which is why it's one of the worst performing videos of the year. But I still think there are some valuable things in here you can learn, particularly in regards to shader nodes and geometry nodes and how there's some interoperability between them, especially in terms of how you can turn volumes into meshes and geo nodes. Also, Modular Workspaces 1.5 is available. This is a really big update for one of my favorite add-on projects. We had a one week sale going on. It's just ended, but I recommend you take a look. But a lot of you are probably already aware of this. But also, if you don't know, I have a second channel where I've been doing experiments with kind of AI automation. Uh, this is like non-Blender related things. And recently I've started kind of engaging with discussions again. So if you're the kind of person that wants something to listen to while you're working, then you might find something here. But that's only really if you like my voice because you'll be hearing it a lot. But anyway, yeah, if you made it this far through the video, then hopefully you found something interesting. There was a lot of really cool stuff in here, lots of resources. Consider subscribing because the more people subscribe on these videos, the more I'll know to keep doing them in the future. And also consider putting a comment on the video. And if you include a specific emoji I'll know you made it this far. What should we do for this one? There were lots of resources. Put the box or the package emoji in the comments because that makes sense. And write a little note. Maybe like what was your favorite resource or what have you been working on recently that you'd like me to know about? Just give me some life. I like interacting with the community. I love learning about what people are doing. So yeah, give me something to connect with. Also, if you want some of my Blender resources, free or paid, you can check out codisold.online slash store. And massive thank you to the patrons at patreon.com slash Holt. I bless all of you with good health and good productivity. You have my eternal gratitude for your support. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.